Squiz Kids acknowledges the traditional owners of the lands on which we podcast, the Turrible and Combermary people. Squiz Kids! It's your daily news fix. Fun, free, fresh. Hello and welcome to Squiz Kids Today, your fresh take on what's happening in the world around you. I'm Bryce Corbett. It's Wednesday, August 16. In Squiz Kids Today, Miracle at Sea for Aussie Surfers, China's Shop on a Cliff Face, Matilda Madness takes hold again, and Baboons 1, Cheetah 0. That's what's making news, kid style. The Lowdown. There were seven sets of very relieved mums and dads yesterday. Seven families, both here and in Indonesia, who had every reason to celebrate. After four missing Aussie surfers and three Indonesian sailors were found safe and sound yesterday after being lost at sea for two days. The Aussie surfers and their Indonesian crewmates went missing late on Sunday night when the boat they were travelling in, en route to a remote surf break, got caught in stormy seas. For two long days, their families had no contact from the travelling party, fearing the worst had happened. So, it was with an enormous sense of relief yesterday afternoon that the families received news that their children had all been found. The surfers were clinging to their surfboards on calm seas, pretty much in the middle of nowhere. A huge search and rescue effort had been launched on Monday when the surfers disappeared, including planes and helicopters. But finally, it was a volunteer searcher on his catamaran that spotted the surfers bobbing in the water and plucked them to safety. Gnarly. That's the good news story for today. As for the bad news, a massive clean-up is underway on the Hawaiian island of Maui as authorities and residents there take stock of the worst fire disaster in the island's modern history. A combination of dry and windy conditions fanned a firestorm at the weekend which devoured everything in its path. And while the devastation has been total, with the fire destroying almost every building in the town of Lahaina, so has the community effort that has been launched to help those who have lost everything, with locals there rallying to provide food, water and shelter. Because, especially in the darkest moments, generosity and kindness shine bright. Spin the globe. Each day we give the world globe a spin and find a news story from wherever it stops. And today we've landed in China, where a shop on a cliff face is causing quite a stir. Deep in the Hunan province and bolted onto a sheer cliff face popular with rock climbers 120 metres from the ground, is a small wooden box, big enough for one shop attendant and a pile of snacks and drinks stuck there to provide climbers with a little bit of refreshment as they make their way to the top. Sheer is a fancy word for steep, and you'll often hear it used when describing a cliff face that is close to being perpendicular, which is to say straight up and down. Each day, one lucky shop attendant climbs up into the teeny tiny shop, and each day a supply of drinks and snacks are lowered down to him or her from the top of the cliff. And while I'm sure the view is spectacular, that is seriously one retail job I would not enjoy. I stuck a link to photos of it in today's episode notes. Do you reckon it's the sort of shop you could work in? Animal Kingdom. If a cheetah took on a baboon, which one do you reckon would win? Okay, so how about if a cheetah tried to take on a troop of baboons? Like one cheetah versus 20 baboons. Yeah, well, I think you can imagine how that would turn out. Well, actually, you don't have to imagine it because a visitor to a wildlife reserve in South Africa has captured it on video, which I've stuck a link to in today's episode notes. And let's just say, the old adage, biting off more than you can chew has never been more appropriate. It's fair to say the cheetah came off second best in the encounter with the baboons and had to retreat with its tail firmly between its legs. Sport time! 
Have you got your Matilda scarf on? A little smear of green and gold face paint on your cheeks? Are you ready to holler the house down? Or maybe you're heading with the family to a live site somewhere to watch tonight's game. Or maybe you're one of the lucky 50,000 or so that's heading to Stadium Australia in Sydney to watch it all with your very own eyes. However you're planning to take in tonight's World Cup semi-final clash between Australia and England, just know that pretty much the whole nation will be doing it with you, as Matilda's fever continues to sweep the country. Even the Aussie men's basketball team, though, when they've been outgunned. The Boomers yesterday announced they've moved forward their own World Cup basketball game against Brazil at Melbourne's Rod Laver Arena so that it doesn't clash with the Matilda's 8pm kickoff. Come on, Tillies, you've got this. Hands up, who's ready for book week? Who reckons they've got the best costume planned in all of Australia? Then, why don't you share a photo of it with us and maybe even win some cool prizes for your troubles? Earlier today, I ran into Catch the Reading Bug from the Squiz Kids Book Club. And while she knows you're all probably very busy with your glitter and hot glue guns preparing your book week costumes for next week, she's offering three fabulous prize packs to the kids with the best costumes. To enter, all you have to do is get your parents or teachers to upload a photo of you in your book week costume to their social media, either Instagram or Facebook. Tag us at SquizKids or hashtag SquizKids and give our page a follow and you'll automatically go into the running to win one of three fabulous prize packs from our friends at Walker Books. And teachers, there'll be a prize for the best dressed teacher too. Give SquizKids a follow on its Facebook page and upload your pic to your socials tagging us and we'll repost them to our own socials pages and pick a winner. Because who doesn't love Book Week? With the possible exception of every working parent in Australia, but that's another story. Happy glue gunning, people! Time for the quiz! This is the part of the podcast where you get to test how well you've been listening. Question number one. What sort of a big cat took on a troop of baboons and lost? Yeah, that's right. It was a cheetah. Question number two. In which country is a tiny shop halfway up a cliff face? Yeah, well done if you said China. Question number three. Which team will the Matildas be playing to beat in tonight's World Cup semi-final? Yeah, that's right. They'll be playing England. Shout out. It's August 16. Birthday today for Thor and Star Wars director Taika Waititi. And it's also the Eka public holiday in Queensland. So, a day off for all you lucky squiz kids in the Sunshine State. What's the Eka? I hear the rest of the country asking. It's short for The Exhibition. Sydney has the Royal Easter Show, Melbourne has the Royal Melbourne Show, Adelaide has the Royal Adelaide Show. In Queensland, they call it The Eka. It's also a special day for these Squiz kids celebrating a birthday today. Manya from Oyster Bay, TJ from Ainsley, Audrey from Warnervale, Blake from Gulgong, Samuel from Queensland, Charlotte from Wagga Wagga, Jackson from Glenwood Hill, Nitten from Greystains, Matilda from Mitcham, Mike from Gladesville and Carty, who's listening all the way over there in England. And belated birthday shout outs today go to the following kids who celebrated a birthday yesterday. Oops, a daisy, we forgot to include you in Monday's podcast. Happy birthday, belatedly, to Esther from Vermont South, Natalia from Oyster Bay, Zachary from Canberra, Elijah from Somerville, Luca from Double View, Iris from Callum Vale, Reese, Juliet, and Eden from Sydney, Mara from Bentley, Bella from Maitland, Malia from DY, Anna from Wagga Wagga, Caitlin from Lane Cove West, and Bianca from Camden. And classroom shout-outs today go to Class 56T at Middle Harbour Public School. Happy birthday to Miss Tattle for yesterday. Class 6B and Mr Cracknell at Willows State School in Townsville. Class 5B and Mr Smith at Villa Maria Catholic Primary School in Hunters Hill. Class 56H and Mrs Hoy at Plumpton Public School. Class 5H with Mr Henley at Tanulba Bay Public School. And finally to Class 6B, Mrs Englefield at the Riverina Anglican College in Wagga Wagga. 
Don't forget if you've got a birthday coming up and you want a shout out, or if you're after a classroom shout out, drop us a line at squizkids at thesquiz.com.au or fill out the form on our website. Well, that's all we have time for. Thanks for listening to Squiz Kids today. We'll be back again tomorrow. In the meantime, get out there and have a most excellent day. Go the Matildas. Over and out. Over and out.